All of the amazing things you're about to see in this video have one thing in common. They were once hidden treasures. They're not hidden anymore, though. They've been found and identified by professional archaeologists, amateur treasure hunters, and lucky members of the public, and in the process of being found, they've generated some fascinating stories. We're excited to be able to tell you those stories right now. We're not sure what the bigger mystery about the Thetford Hoard is, the hoard itself, or the fate of the person who found it. The collection was discovered on Gallows Hill close to Thetford in Norfolk, England in late 1979 and contains a wide range of gold and silver goods, including rings, bracelets, necklaces, and pendants from the late Roman period in Britain 1600 years ago. Nobody knows how or why it came to be buried, but it was found by someone exploring a building site with a metal detector without seeking permission. To compound his error, he then tried to sell his discoveries to private buyers without notifying the proper authorities. The unlawful sale of such priceless goods might have landed the finder a prison sentence, but before action could be taken, he passed away after a sudden illness in July 1980. That's led to a whole mythology building up around the hoard to suggest that it's cursed. That probably isn't true, but it's likely to be incomplete. Nobody knows how many artifacts were sold by the finder before he was caught, and nobody's ever come forward since. Somewhere off the coast of Somerset, England is a shipwreck containing treasures worth over a billion dollars. Or at least that's the rumor. People have been looking for the wreck of the Merchant Royal, an enormous 700-ton vessel, ever since it sank not long after leaving port in London in August 1641. At the time of her sinking, she was carrying half a million gold coins, 400 gold ingots, 500 bars of gold bullion, and a large but unspecified amount of jewelry, including gems and pearls. The loss was an economic disaster for England. The amount of treasure on board was said to be equivalent to around a third of the country's public funds. There have been tantalizing near misses when people have gone in search of the Merchant Royal, such as the discovery of 600,000 silver coins on the seabed in 2007, but still precious little sign of the actual wreck. The elusive nature of the vessel has given it the nickname the El Dorado of the Seas. Our most recent near sighting of it occurred in March 2019 when an enormous anchor was trawled by a Cornish fishing vessel. It's of the right age and designed to have come from the Merchant Royal, but that doesn't mean it did. The hunt continues. In 1919, a strange silver discovery was made on a hillside in East Edinburgh, Scotland. It was a great collection of Roman-era silver, but it had all been deliberately hacked and smashed into tiny pieces. This treasure discovery, now known as the Traprain Law Treasure, has been attracting curiosity ever since. Historians believe that these shattered pieces were buried around 1600 years ago, toward the end of the Roman occupation of Britain and the beginning of the country's Dark Ages. Many of the pieces appear to have come from a single dish, which, if it was still in one piece, would be one of the largest silver dishes ever found anywhere on Roman territory. It was once thought that the silver was looted from the retreating Romans and then hacked into pieces by the occupants of the pirate's nest at Trepane for no reason other than the fact that they were barbarians. But that's now thought to be unlikely. The current theory is that what we're actually looking at is one of Europe's largest collections of hack silver. The departure of the Romans triggered an economic crisis on the British Isles, and people stopped trading in or accepting Roman coins. Instead, they assessed the value of gold and silver by weight when agreeing on trades, and so gold and silver artifacts were cut into pieces to be used as a replacement form of currency. The explanation makes sense but still doesn't tell us why the collection was buried. As impressive as the Traprain Law treasure is, it's got nothing on the Staffordshire hoard. This is the single largest collection of Anglo-Saxon silver, gold, and metalwork ever found on the British Isles. The collection contains over 4,600 items, all of which were found together in an astonishing archaeological discovery in Hammerswich, Staffordshire in 2009. 
Archaeologists believe the artifacts had been in the ground since the middle of the 7th century. Back then, this part of England was part of the ancient Anglo-Saxon kingdom of Mercia. Oddly, every single artifact in the collection either belonged to or was designed to be worn by a man, with no women's armor, jewelry, or other effects in sight. The Birmingham Museum and Art Gallery paid the equivalent of $5 million for the collection, most of which went to the finder. Even then, it's likely that the hoard is worth far more. The most common theory as to the hoard's origin is that it was a repository of some kind for an Anglo-Saxon army. That would explain the lack of female-oriented artifacts or domestic items and the fact that every piece, save for three religious items, could have a military purpose. We've already mentioned that the Romans withdrew from England during the 4th century. By the 5th century, the Western Roman Empire was approaching the point of total collapse, leading to instability and a loss of knowledge across Europe. Finds from this era are exceptionally valuable, such as the fine collection of grave goods that were obtained from a 1600-year-old tomb in Chechia in February 2021. The strikingly ornate discoveries were made close to the Czech village of Sandrazice. Inside a log chamber, within the tomb were the remains of a woman no older than 50, with the grave goods arranged all around her. They include gold and silver clasps with precious stones set into them, a gold headdress, glass beads, and various textiles and leathers. The tributary positioning of the offerings, combined with the presence of the ceremonial-looking headdress, suggests that this was someone of great local importance at the time of her death. Perhaps she was even a local queen. Sadly, there's no record of her name inside the tomb, but her loss at a time when the Romans were also disappearing from sight probably made things even more difficult for the area. Our next treasure discovery is the Erfurt treasure, so named because it was found in Erfurt, Germany in 1998. As charming and valuable as this collection of ingots, coins, jewelry, and such like is, there's thought to be a dark tale behind it. The collection was hidden deliberately in 1349. Back then, this was a Jewish neighborhood, and there's a very compelling reason why a Jewish individual or family would want to hide their wealth in 1349. This was the era of the Black Death pogroms. The Black Death was sweeping Europe, and people wanted to know why. Someone decided Jews were to blame, and so there was a spate of racially and religiously motivated attacks on the Jewish population between 1348 and 1351. It's known that the owner of the house in 1349 was a Jewish money changer by the name of Kalman von Weick, but his fate is unknown. He obviously never came back for his treasure collection, though, so we can probably draw our own conclusions. The treasure, along with information about the disturbing story behind it, is currently on display inside Erfurt's Old Synagogue Museum. It's often said of self-important people that they want to sit on a throne of solid gold. But some historical leaders actually have. One such leader was Maharaja Ranjit Singh, also known as the Lion of Punjab, who ruled the Sikh Empire during the 19th century. This is his incredibly ornate throne, which was designed and built by goldsmith Hafez Muhammad Multani somewhere between 1820 and 1830. As impressive as it looks, Hafez achieved this effect without actually sculpting the entire throne out of gold. It's actually wood and resin at its core, with a coating of engraved gold sheeting. The shape of the throne is intended to resemble lotus petals, with the lotus being a symbol of both creation and purity. Unfortunately for Multani, the Maharaja didn't like his big shiny chair. He was noted for dressing in simple clothes and eschewing many of the trappings of his position, preferring to sit cross-legged on the floor with his people. The throne was inevitably taken by the British after the annexation of Punjab in 1849. It's now in the hands of the Victoria and Albert Museum in London, which has thus far ignored repeated requests from the Indian government to hand it back. In the year 61, the English town of Colchester was burnt to the ground by the armies of Queen Budicha during her uprising against the occupying Roman forces. The town's residents had little time to prepare for the attack, 
so some of them buried their prized personal possessions beneath their homes while in a state of panic. Many of them were never able to return for those goods, and so they're eventually found by archaeologists instead. That proved to be the case yet again when an abandoned department store was demolished in the town, and a research team came to find out what was hiding below it. They found a significant collection of ancient Roman jewelry, thought to be so valuable that the find has been designated as being nationally significant. The goods were found buried beneath a thick layer of black and red debris and detritus, the remains of what were once the Roman clay walls of the building that stood here in ancient times. They melted during Bodice's Inferno. The collection of gold armlets, silver necklaces, silver bracelets and armlets, and other assorted coins and trinkets has now been taken away to be assessed and cleaned at a local laboratory. If you're going to go treasure hunting illegally, don't make a second stupid mistake by trying to sell your ill-gotten goods on the open market. That's our advice. And it's advice based on the experience of an amateur archaeologist who got caught red-handed trying to sell gold and silver artifacts in Germany recently. He did a very bad job of covering his tracks, and so the majority of the 5th century artifacts he found in the southwest of the country were retrieved before he could sell them. Unfortunately, some of the artifacts had already been sold and sent to customers based abroad, and German police are powerless to retrieve them. German law says that no archaeological digs or surveys can take place without authorization, and all finds of significance must be reported. This individual failed on both of those counts and is now on his way to jail on account of the fact that the goods he illegally acquired are worth in excess of $1 million. It appears to have been buried during the 5th century as the Roman Empire fell in the area around the Rhine and then had been forgotten about or abandoned because its owner perished. Most construction firms know to expect one or two archaeologically interesting artifacts to turn up when they're laying or excavating the foundations of a new housing development. They prepare for such eventualities. We think it's fair to say that the construction firm working on a new development in the Alexandria Riverfront in Alexandria, Virginia, USA, was considerably less prepared for what came their way at the start of 2021. So far, their work has unearthed more than 150,000 historical artifacts. This part of the city is known as Old Town Alexandria, and there certainly appear to be plenty of relics in the very old town lurking beneath its streets. Some of the discoveries go all the way back to the founding of Alexandria as a settlement in 1749. The biggest shock so far has been finding out what the land is actually made of. Far below the street is several layers of hardcore made from rubble, earth, and old wooden ship holes that were used to extend the waterfront further out into the Potomac River. At the smaller end of the scale, there are wine bottles, teapots, and plates in the ruins of old houses and buildings. It's like the current Alexandria was built directly atop the old one. We've all been to a garage sale before, and nine times out of ten when we go to one, we find nothing but cheap tad and boring junk. Despite that, it's always worth going. You're never sure what you might find at the back of a garage. Perhaps next time, you'll find a genuine medieval sword like this one. It was found by a son who'd come to clear out the home of his recently deceased father in Yorkshire, England in February 2020. His father had never mentioned having an ancient weapon in the garage. The man, both confused and curious, contacted ancient weapon specialist Paul McDonald for assistance. McDonald was able to quickly confirm that the sword is either 15th or 16th century and would have originally belonged to a Scottish Highland mercenary warrior known as a Galloglass. The sword is rusty and has a broken tip, neither of which is surprising when you consider its age, but that didn't dampen demand for it when it was sent for auction. McDonald expected to sell it for somewhere around $8,000. By the time the auction was complete, it had sold for $40,000. Whenever you move into a new home, have a good look around for secret storage places. Poke at a few floorboards and feel your way around the walls for hollows. There could be almost anything hiding in your house with you. 
A young couple in the USA who wished to remain anonymous recently carried out a do-it-yourself project in their kitchen that involved taking much of the existing kitchen to pieces. When they ripped out the floor, they found an old-fashioned safe waiting for them. They'd found a safe code written on the back of an old piece of furniture when they moved in and never thought much of it. But fortunately, they'd also never thrown it out. The code opened the safe, and inside the safe was $50,000 in cash. Alongside the cash was an old bottle of James E. Pepper bourbon dated to 1960 with its seal still intact, and a book containing a picture of Gregory Peck and a few clues that may yet turn out to be a cryptic treasure map. The couple had lived in the house for three years with no knowledge of what lurked beneath the kitchen floor and haven't been able to find out who left this treasure behind or when. We guess it was just their lucky day. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.